The entertainment industry should only care about its customer base, and yet frequently it cares more about the opinion of journalistic critics and award shows more than the people giving them actual money. You can't serve two masters, and Hollywood, to be fair, isn't. They've just thrown the customers and the quality of their product under the bus so that they can submit to the ideas which are trendy at the moment. The vulnerability to critics is obvious, but the nature of how award ceremonies impact on entertainment is a lot more subversive. Because with journalists, you just get things like The Last Jedi. Oh, 91% to 42% audience score. I don't put a lot of stock in Rotten Tomatoes, but for this, it's good enough. Because when it comes to critics, their vulnerabilities are things like access, but also being appealed to in the ideology. If all you do is put in things which pander to them, then obviously they're going to give you a better score. Making Star Wars about a Mary Sue of Rey was an easy win for them, and hey, they wanted to keep access, so they were scared to step out of line. And then, you also have other TV shows which are just objectively awful. You had Batwoman, which was a disaster from the start, even though it had two entirely different actresses play the part. I had 83 to 23% audience score. Anyone that watches that show, I think we can all agree that 23 is a lot more accurate than 83. Then we had Naomi, 90%. I challenge anyone to watch that show and give it a 90%. I think 60% is incredibly generous as it is. 90 means you've been on the laughing gas recently and that's the only entertainment that you could get from the show. And of course, Wheel of Time. A lot closer than the rest, but still, I would trust the audience score a lot more than the critic score, largely because I've seen the show. Journalist critics want to maintain access. They want the inside track to go to the premieres to be pampered, but also to get exclusive information to get it first, so they can put out articles and get the most views based off being first. But the other major reason is they want to be seen in Hollywood as if they're the good people. They believe with all the good things, the trendy things, the new ideas, and they just think horrible ideas about all those pesky other things that came from the past and tradition. So what you end up with is a feedback loop. The journalist wants to say good things, and they also want to appear like moral people, and the entertainment industry want to give them all of those things while also wanting positive reviews back. So everyone begins to agree about the same things, and not a single contradictory opinion is allowed into this feedback loop, because otherwise, you'll be a bad person and kicked out of it. Everyone has a built-in reason to agree. So what of the impact of award ceremonies, and why does every Oscar winner of recent times make it seem like I'd want to start counting sheep in the cinema just so my brain doesn't die off? Nomadland, a woman in her 60s embarks on a journey across America in a van. Well, that sounds like a triple-A big budget title I'd want to go and see. Green Book, a working class Italian America becomes a driver for a pianist. The Shape of Water, a story about a janitor. And Moonlight, a story about an American who struggles with where he's going to put his dangly bits. For anyone that thinks that award ceremonies actually care about the merit of a piece, I can only point you to the Oscars. But oh, it's fine, it's just an award ceremony. They just give them the trophy, that's all they do! They don't damage entertainment in any way. No. Because I bring you back again to the fact that entertainment should only care about the customers, only make things for what the customers want. They shouldn't care about the award ceremonies at all. If they get them, it should be a bonus. But you should really just want to please as many people as possible. It's not what George R. R. Martin has in mind, though. Actually, in a recent interview, doesn't talk about the audience at all. Commenting on the supposed rivalry for House of Dragon and Rings of Power, he says, Oh, the battle for fantasy. It's Rings of Power versus House of Dragon. Who will win? I don't know why they always have to do that. And that's fair enough. But the question to me is, how does he actually assess winning? Because it should be viewer numbers. Whoever gets the most viewers gets the most subscriptions. Or on traditional TV, whoever got the most viewers and the best demographic for ads gets the most money. That's how you win. You become more profitable than the other guy. And yet George R. R. Martin judges success in a very different way, and the audience doesn't factor into it at all. I hope both shows succeed. I'm competitive enough. I hope we succeed more. If they win six Emmys, and I hope they do, I hope we win seven. Success, in his eyes, only comes down to how many Emmys a show's win. It doesn't matter of viewers, he didn't say I just hope we make the audience happy. None of that entered his mind. Only the award shows. And when it comes to award ceremonies, the benefits for the entertainment industry becomes very similar to the actual critics themselves. Namely, they get to go to the award ceremonies, they get a lot of pomp and ceremony, they get to do the red carpet treatment, they get prestige from the award, free advertising that comes from winning it, and 
they all get free gifts. And these gifts aren't nothing. For the Oscars in the last year, the value was around 140,000. In 2021, the awards bag was worth 205,000. In 2020, it was 225,000. Unfortunately, in 2019, they did come away quite poor in the fact that they got a goodie bag worth only $100,000. Oh, I'm not sure how they're gonna cope. In 2016, it was 232,000. And with inflation, that's probably like a trillion pounds now. And just like the journalists, all the directors and the actors, they also want to be seen like good people. They want to be seen as if they're actually human beings with emotions. And so they go on stage and start virtue signaling about whatever happens to be trendy today as well. We wish to also acknowledge those precious lives lost to the violence of inequality, injustice, hatred, racism, and poverty. I take responsibility. For every time it was easier to ignore than to call it out for what it was. Every not so funny joke. Every blatant injustice, no matter how big or small, I take responsibility. Except literally not a single person on earth cares about the opinions of the degenerates. This is why Ricky Gervais was so popular because he stood on stage and told them exactly what they needed to hear, told them exactly what the audience thought and they didn't like it. You'll be pleased to know this is the last time I'm hosting these awards, so I don't care anymore. I'm joking, I never did. Let's have a laugh at your expense. In this room are some of the most important TV and film executives in the world, but they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. Talking of all you perverts, ush. Their job isn't acting anymore. It's going to the gym twice a day and taking steroids, really. Have we got a... Have we got an award for most ripped junkie? No. The people of Virtue Signal always have the most to hide, because otherwise, they wouldn't need to do it. Normally, virtue is shown through your deeds, through how you live your life. But in Hollywood, and now widely across the internet, so many people are determined to show it in other ways, just verbally. Normally, because they have a guilty conscience that they're trying to cover up. Because it's just a persona they're trying to put across, that's why the NPC script is always the same for everybody. It's not even their ideas, they just copied it off somebody else. And why whatever flag or profile picture they've got on Twitter this week will happen to change to whatever everybody else change it to next. And so, with the entertainment industry forgetting about the customers, not wanting to make quality shows for them anymore, and caring more about the journalists and the award ceremonies, what have the award ceremonies used this power for? Because they haven't been idle. Instead, they've been leveraging it for the same thing this ideology always leverages it for. Power. Back in 2020, the Oscars decided that they no longer wanted the entertainment industry to focus on talent. No. They didn't care about talent anymore, they didn't care about the quality of the product. They only cared about the characteristics of the people involved. That's how you get titles like this. The Oscars' new bigoted rules are sweeping, but safe. Because you see, it doesn't matter how much of a racist you are, the New York Times always wants you to be worse. The Oscars decided that being the best person for the job, and hiring purely based off talent, no matter who that person would be, that was no longer good enough for the Oscars. No. They couldn't have that, because the Oscars didn't believe that if you hired the best people, then you would get a broad range of people. So therefore, they thought you had to hire people with no talent and force them into the role where they didn't belong because they couldn't compete, just so you could say they were there. Personally, I believe that anyone can compete. I think you should just hire based off the best people for the job, and the best people will rise to the top, and that will naturally lead to a whole array of people. And I'm not going to sit there and count all the numbers and work it out in some kind of ratio, because I don't care about the characteristics of a person, I only care about the quality of their work. That's why I don't care about the makeup of the NBA, or how many women are bricklayers. Except this is California and Hollywood, and that meant only one thing. They are massive racists. That's why they set up the different standards, A through D. Because the Oscars think they can't compete on their own in a fair system, and so must be given special privileges. I mean, as funny as it is implying that everyone is disabled, I, I mean, come on, it's not a good look for you, is it, the Oscars, let's face it. Or at least 30% of the cast must be actors from at least two of those four categories. This means that any hiring department of any entertainment company can no longer focus on talent. They can only focus on incredibly discriminatory hiring practices which care about anything else except the only thing that matters how good you are at the job the next time people are bad in their job it's like oh yeah maybe it's because the companies no longer care about hiring the best people anymore no now it's literally just checking a checkbox and of course this isn't good for the people who are hired themselves either all those stories about well when i sit in an office no one ignores me or takes my opinion seriously yes maybe it's because they know why you got hired it's because they weren't hired for their opinion or their skill
They were hired simply to be a number on a page to satisfy a criteria. And of all the things to care about a person, these characteristics are the most ridiculous ones to do them. They mean nothing. They're not part of your personality. They say nothing about who you are or your skills to do anything. They're just physical characteristics. And if you go around and judge people by these characteristics, then you're filth. Which means that all of Hollywood that applies for the Oscars is filth. And it goes on with standard B. Now you've got department heads with the same thing. Even cinematographers or composers. Six members of the crew. 30% of the film crew. Standard C and D. The film's distributor or financing company must also have interns. The film's production, distribution, or financing company must offer training or work opportunities. This isn't just actors, it's senior positions, and even people that just lend them money or distribute the film. And then you get D, the marketing, publicity, and distribution executives on a film. If you go around and judge people based on something as ridiculously absurd as the tone of their skin, then you're filth. And that means that the entire Hollywood industry is filth. So it's not just the Oscars, it's not just movies which apply for this, which does this. This is spread through everything. The Golden Globes is currently full of infighting for exactly the same reason. It got boycotted because a load of people weren't happy with the skin tone of the people involved. We're living in a time period where people no longer care about talent in entertainment. They only care about your chemical biology. Next up, we're going to care about the vitamin D levels of the HFPA, and we're just going to sort them out by whether they've been taking their sub supplements recently. I want at least 10 people who are left-handed. That'll really help for some reason no one's quite worked out yet. And so the Golden Globes had to stick a year as punishment for not having an adequate number to satisfy the racists of America. And so, before coming back, they initiated an action plan. And that was, we're going to institute racial hiring practices. Yes, the mid-century Germans would be proud. My favourite part is how it says they needed more transparency to help alleviate the public perception that the group doesn't seek to be inclusive. It's the Golden Globes panel of judges. You don't get more exclusive than that. That excludes most people in the world. In fact, the only people it doesn't explicitly exclude is 105 people from 55 countries. 105 out of like six and a half billion people on the planet seems pretty exclusive to me. And with good reason, because exclusivity is what gives it value. And with exclusivity meant that out of six and a half billion people, you could choose the 105 best people for that role and therefore just pick the cream of the crop. And the moment you stop hiring based off merit, it, you will inevitably start producing lower quality crap. And so not only is all of this being done for the worst reasons so that a few people can try and appear as if they're virtuous by preaching the most discriminatory, awful ideas in the world, but it's also being done by the worst people. That's how you end up with bickering publicists, taking catty swings at each other. And that is how you end up with places like the Oscars giving their awards to a woman in her 60s traveling across America in a van. Because the relationship between the entertainment creators, the journalists, and the award ceremonies is just an aerobarus of filth, feeding on itself, making itself more and more extreme as time goes on. So much so, that now we're going back in time to where we're just judging people based off their biological characteristics, rather than the person themselves, what they can bring to the company, or the quality of work that they can provide. Is it any wonder when it comes to this, that entertainment is so awful at the moment, that TV shows and movies are so often crap, and that movies like Top Gun Maverick stand out above the filth, because unlike everything else, they do one thing differently. They care about the fans. They thank the fans. And at the end of the day, those are the only people that matter. But let me know your thoughts down below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.